same day as the July 7, 2005 London bombing. So people were not in the mood. Hey guys! What's up? It's currently 9.22 p.m. I'm starting my next vlog. This is my progress. 2007 is one of the most There's a bu bunch of them there. One awful some there. Reason some there. Benoit killed his family and himself. Oh, no one there. Event itself and Ooh, a snap. Time. Run when something other than a world title match main event it. The pay-per-view main events of 2012, in order, beginning with January, the Royal Rumble match, okay. A Cena Kane ambulance match, bullshit. Cena versus Rock, fair enough. Cena versus Lesnar, also fair enough. Cena versus Laurinaitis, come on now. Cena versus Big Show, up to you. A five man running in the back match, and finally, Lesnar versus Triple H, perfect storm. Not a world title match main event to be seen. February of 1983, Flair toured the Caribbean, losing his title to Jack Benino, Carlos Colon, and Victor Javica. In each case, Flair won back or was awarded the title by the NWA before returning home. A year later, Flair traded the belt back and forth with Harley Race during a tour of the South Pacific, an exchange recognized by WCW, but not NWA or WWE. Bottom line, no one is really sure how many titles Flair has won, but it's freaking loads and more than 16. The end. Number one, Austin 316 launched Stone Cold to superstardom. As soon as Stone Cold Steve Austin said the words Austin 316, he became the biggest thing in the WWE. This is lies. On the 22nd of June 1996, he did take a huge step to success that it would become because it's more of a catalyst as opposed to an explosion. For example, let's look at what he did the following night on Raw. He took on The Undertaker and got DQ'd when Goldust attacked the dead men. The next week... It was a good night. Um, you know, we had a, we had a lot of guys there. We had you know we had Barry there. God, it could have been Bart Gunn. It could have been a lot of people. Uh, we had Glenn Jacobs there. So there were a lot of people there that we were last minute going. Well, shit. Maybe they could be a night. Maybe he could be a night. It didn't matter at that point. It was just an enhancement to get the hearts over and to get to the story of Owen and Brett. And that's, that was the purpose of the match, was to get to Owen and Brett. So it really didn't matter who the fuck the night was at this point. We didn't have our Lawler-Brett angle that we were going to blow off here. We stuck Sean in there. We just needed to get through the match to get to the whole story. So it, it didn't matter really and truly who the Knights were at this point. 
didn't matter. We didn't have our big reveals to have fun with. You're going to shit out a wrestler and, and just have him uh, appear? I mean, so it snuck up on you? You didn't know that you'd been advertising this match for months? We didn't know Terry Funk was going to not show up the day before or day of. All right, well, there's one, but you still well, we had Terry. We had Terry and Greg Valentine, and then we were planning on doing some others that all fell through. They all fell through all the way up until the last day of the show. Shame. So you do you do what you have. You work with what you have. And just okay. I mean, Barry Horowitz is a, is a is an enhancement guy. Barry Horowitz was light heavyweight champion by God. It's unbelievable to me that you can even remotely justify this. Let's talk about Ray Combs. Uh, I think if you don't remember the name, you probably remember him as the host of Family Feud. Made an appearance, I believe, at WrestleMania 8. Uh, I think. McMahon wanted his latest signee to portray a soldier to fly the American flag in all its glory as a war hero. Hall, being Hall, told Vince that if he wanted him to be G.I. Joe, he'd be the best damn G.I. Joe he could be. But he quickly retorted with his own idea, one that would see him rip off Scarface. McMahon had never seen the movie, assumed Hall was some kind of creative genius, signed off on it, and it was all a huge success. Number three, John Cena. We all know what happened when The Rock returned to the WWE in 2011. He got into it with John Cena, especially because years prior to this, the man that can't be seen had run his mouth about Dwayne Johnson, and now it was time for revenge. And that was literally how it was meant to go as well. Cena would stand there and take it all from the people's champ, as almost some sort of punishment for speaking out. He wasn't meant to respond at all. Why anyone thought that would be enjoyable, I don't know. And unsurprisingly, Cena went and complained about it. Given that both men could talk and had a reputation as such, fans would want to see them leave it all out there in the ring. As John himself put it, it would be like LeBron James playing against Michael Jordan, and nothing short of each man's best would do. Thankfully, everyone involved realized this was the way to go, allowing the pair to rip each other to shreds. Thank goodness that did happen. Number two. Aha! Again, due to injuries sustained at a Starcade match in 1999 against Bill Goldberg, Bret Hart had to retire shortly afterwards. Sad situation, but on-air angles still have to be cleared up, including the fact that Hart was the leader of the NWO at the time and was scheduled to defend his world title against Sid Vicious. The way WCW ended this was by locking Sid in a limousine and then having Bret ride over it in a monster truck. What do you do when you don't like someone? If this sounds silly, it's because it is silly. But it's not as silly as what was initially pitched. In that scenario, WCW wanted Sid to actually be in the limo. So not a stuntman or, you know, a nobody. They wanted Sid to just hang out and hope everything would be okay. Hart realized how dumb this was and told them to go another way. Especially because Sid could have been killed. The company listened and nothing untoward went down. But honestly, really WCW? Really? Number one, Ken Shamrock. Before WWE went all PG, there was always chat they wanted to run an incest angle. And yes, you did hear me say those words out loud. I part of me just hope it's not actually true. The thing is, well, it is true. In 1999, for example, mm-hmm. the character of Ryan Shamrock... I'm okay. You're okay right now? Did you eat when you were at Starbucks? At the time, the Ryan place? infuriated her brother Mom, by dating my new one. Mal Venus. But the original story... Hey guys, what's up? Currently 5.52 p.m. I'm exhausted. So I'm going to end my vlog and I will see you later. Bye!